all the family's always been into music. Well, it does help, doesn't it, a bit of in a, being a boxer. Especially with me and Ken in town at the Bridge House, because all the customers I knew their father, I knew their fathers. So, you know, we had to... Uh, I said, hey, wait, you behave yourself, I'll tell your father. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, to keep control of the old Bridge House for seven years was phenomenal, really. Without any serious, you know, just fights, because it was fights, but uh, that happens everywhere. I think because me and my sons and my family, my brother John's well-known boxer, and my Mick, brother Mick was a well-known boxer, brother Jim is still at West Ham now. So we were a boxing family, and uh, I guess it helped. Because you knock them out quick, see, when you're a boxer, and you knock them out and take them out. <laughs> Well, the biggest, biggest thing that ruins any business, you know, especially in the entertainment business, is fighting and trouble. So that's, you got, I mean, we was there to stop it, not start it. And if you hit someone on the chin, then you're starting it. So, you know, you've got to make sure nothing happens inside. He was a lovely bloke, Laurie. I mean, I've known Laurie since the early 50s. And... Uh, Boxing and stuff like that, you know. And he's friends. He used to meet his friends often. And uh, and Stevie said, I want to do a gig, I want a gig. Uh, I said, well, why don't you play next week, if you like, you know. Stevie Marriott. But I found out afterwards that he'd played earlier for me in the late 60s for my brother John with another band. But uh, he was sensational, sensational. Police waiting to arrest him. When he had gone to the States, he had a, had a recording studio with some guys, and uh, they were obviously, I don't know whether it was on the book or what, they got all the, all the uh, equipment in, and then someone sold it. <laughs> and he vanished to America, and then the police must have heard that he was playing the Bridge House, but he was blind drunk. The gig was blind drunk. He was uh, red wine, you know, they all had different names, like. So the police said to me, uh, Stevie Marriott here tonight? I said, I don't think so, no. You know, oh, gee, the pub's packed, 800 people, in, and the police there want to arrest him. So, uh, anyway, I got to him, I got to him, I was driving around him and gone to have something to eat. I found him and put him in my office upstairs. And Tony's going, I don't give a F about them, he said, you know. I said, well, no, I don't know about that, they'll bang you up. I said, apart from this gig, I said, you don't want to be locked up. So he said, well, I've got some stuff in my pocket anyway, and I don't want them to see. Anyway, I phoned Laurie. Laurie came straight down and spoke to the police. It was not a criminal thing, actually. It was completely over the top. And uh, this thing sorted it out, you know, and he was back again. He'd done four weeks on the trot for Stevie. Well, Ronnie and Reggie, we grew up together. We boxed together. We was all boxers together and uh, amateurs together and professionals together and stuff like that. And I used to see him in the dance halls. I was always dancing when I was a kid. And uh, the Pop Pacific was one of the places. They, that was their place. And we used to go there and, we, and we'd, our place would be the public all coming down. It was all sort of gang orientated even in them days. I mean, I... We'd have our gang up Ken in town and they'd have their gang over Bow and stuff like that. And you'd meet and then you'd go and have a fight or have a fight and stuff like that, you know. Uh, but through knowing them, it didn't, you know, you didn't fight with people you knew. With guys like him, I've said this before, but I think they, they just wanted to be treated as ordinary people in the end because they're major stars all over the world. And he'd come down the pub, I mean, he'd, he'd, he'd load, done all his own roadieing and stuff like that, you know, which is unheard of. A major star doing roadieing, and he set his drums up and he'd get the sound, and he was amazing, really was. We used to have lovely drinks after time and all. Of course, Mick and Keith come down and wanted to take us out. But, uh, and everyone kept looking at Mick Jagger saying, Mick Jagger's brother's here tonight. I just wouldn't believe it's Mick Jagger. 
I said to him, uh, do you like this type of music? Mate? No, he said, no, I hate it. Jazz, wasn't it? He said, no, I hate it. He said, we just come down and support Charlie. 